So I have a question from Doman and Doman asks, just watched your latest propulsion video and a question struck me. Can you please explain how a hip shift is an expansion strategy? Absolutely. So I've got my pelvis handy here. And what we'll do is we'll start our representation from a point of about zero degrees of hip extension. So in this early phase of hip flexion, so from about zero to say 60 degrees of hip flexion, if I was to perform a hip shifting activity, so a shift posteriorly into the acetabulum, what I'm going to do is create an external rotation of this ilium, which would be moving towards a position of inhalation. So I'll get a counter mutation of the sacrum on the same side, and I'll get a rotation of the lumbar spine to the same side as well. And so in this case, the expansion is going to be in the anterior outlet of the pelvis and the, the posterior superior aspect of the pelvis and, and the lumbar area. If I was to move the hip towards 90 degrees of hip flexion and perform the same hip shifting strategy, what you're probably going to see under those circumstances, you're going to see an, an IR of, of this ilium. So an exhalation position of the ilium, which would create a nutation of the sacrum under those circumstances. And so now the expansion is in the posterior outlet of the pelvis. So this would occur under most hinging activities. Whereas if I was to perform this hip shift in the early phases, again, I'm promoting an inhalation external rotation strategy. So hopefully that clears up what you're doing under those hip shift circumstances. If it doesn't clarify it enough, Dillman, please ask another question.